Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Today I'm here with my one star predictions. I have seen that like five star predictions video going around on booktube for a little while and I definitely plan on making a video like that as well because I have many more books with which I'm like, oh my god, I think I'm gonna love them instead of with these ones where I am like, I am uh, not sure what I'm gonna think of them. Even though the title is like one star predictions, I rarely give one star reviews to books. I cannot really think of any book right now that I have given a one star, but basically I'm just taking that title to make it a bit more like entertaining because these are just some books that I'm doubting that I will like give them four or five stars. So these are basically books that I doubt I will love. And I wrote down in my new notebook. I just need to do like a little shameless self promo here. I just did an Etsy update. Well, it's actually happening tomorrow, but by the time that I will be uploading this video, all the new bookmarks, notebook, stickers, etc., will be up on my Etsy shop. So definitely please go check it out if you want to support me, my channel, my creations. I don't know if I will have many notebooks left because I had a ton of enthusiastic response from you guys on my Instagram. So let's hope that there are some left when this video will be uploaded. But I wrote down all of my thoughts on the six books that I will be mentioning in today's video and why I think I might not enjoy them as much as perhaps some other people here on booktube do. And as per usual, I do have some very, very popular books here that are featured in this pile because I'm just really unsure of whether they will be my cup of tea. But the first book is a really, really well-known one. And I know that in the book community, there are like very mixed opinions about it, but overall it has really high ratings. And that is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I might have the tiniest edition that I have ever seen. It is a vintage vintage edition is what it says here. I don't know. On one hand, I think it looks really cool, but then on the other, I just don't really like mass market paperbacks. I'm pretty sure you all know what it is about, but I will give you synopses for all of these books nevertheless. The circus arrives without warning. No announcement preceded. It is simply there when yesterday it was not. The black sign painted in white letters that hangs upon the gates reads, opens at nightfall, closes at dawn. As the sun disappears beyond the horizon, all over the tents, small lights lights begin to flicker, as though the entirety of the circus is covered in particularly bright fireflies. When the tents are all aglow, sparkling against the night sky, another sign appears. Le Cirque de Rêve. <laughs> The Circus of Dreams, here comes my French. <laughs> now the circus is open, now you may enter. And apparently this book is a lot of like whimsy and super magical, but it mainly focuses on the writing and the atmosphere and from having like read or heard a couple of people's opinions, nothing much happens in this book basically. There is almost no plot and I don't know if I can handle a book with no plot and a lot of like lyrical beautiful writing. It really depends on it, I guess. If I don't like the writing, then I probably won't like this book because for me personally, nothing else carries me through it. Some other people said it is a very slow story, which is also kind of like a very hit or miss thing for me and that it is very descriptive. It's just, I'm very on the fence of whether the writing style will be for me and when there's no plot, you need a good writing style, you know? And also some other people said that the magic is very unrestrained so like everything kind of seems possible but definitely with all these books that I will be talking about today please let me know your thoughts and like what you think of the stories and I don't know maybe you have some kind of feeling whether it will be something for me as well I'm open for criticism for opinions just let them all know in the comments down below so it's very like I want to love it because everyone else loves it but will I that is the question Next up, we have a contemporary that I never hear anyone talk about. Might be for good reason. I don't know. This one also had quite a low ratings on Goodreads. So some of these books that I found on my shelves had low ratings. And very often when a book has like below a 3.7, I'm already kind of like iffy about whether I will like it or not. And with this one, it is A Big Bones by Laura Dockrell. It says here, I think I look pretty today and I'm nice and kind and interesting. And I've already proved that I can make a pretty decent sandwich. Meet Bluebell, AKA BB, AKA Big Bones. She's bold, beautiful and beginning her summer holiday. But instead of relaxing, she's being forced to write a food diary. So 
very triggering already um, regarding like eating disorders and just be aware of that. And she has a lot to say. Then an accident upturns her family and BB finds it's not just the diary bringing unexpected change into her life. And Max with the dimples, will they ever move beyond latte art and chamomile tea? Okay, I love latte art because I am a barista myself. But I really wanted to read this book because I want to read more stories that focus on like body image and how damaging our whole like diet culture, modeling industry and everything how that is. So I find those themes very interesting. But I have heard mixed opinions of how this is worked out in the story. And I also saw that Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe, who is a very, very good friend of mine, has read this book. And I read from other people as well that there are some ableist comments in this story. There's going to be like, like a character I think who gets into an accident and gets into a wheelchair and there are some not so great comments made about that situation in this book so <sighs> mixed thoughts on how the premise of this story is going to be worked out and yeah it's just a shame that apparently those ableist comments have been made in this book and let's see how body positive this story actually is now that we're talking about Olivia, this is her favorite book and we've talked about this before on FaceTime. She knows that I am unsure of whether this story is something for me and that is <sighs> The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater, a book community classic. I have had this book on my shelves for a couple of years right now and it intrigues me a lot but we have again a very whimsical, magical setting. And I believe that the genre that you can classify this book as is magical realism. And I don't know if that is my type of genre. There are only two reasons a non-seer would see a spirit on St. Mark's Eve. Either you're his true love or you killed him. Every year, Blue Sergeant stands next to her clairvoyant mother as the soon-to-be-dead walk past. Lou never sees them until this year when a boy emerges from the dark and speaks to her which sounds very cool though. <laughs> His name is Gansey and he is a rich student at Aklian by Aklian B? The local private school. Blue has a policy of staying away from Aglon B boys. I'm gonna say Aglon B from now on, okay? <laughs> Known as Raven boys, they can only mean trouble. But Blue is drawn to Gansey in a way she can't entirely explain. He is on a quest that has encompassed three other Raven boys. Adam, the scholarship student who resents the privilege around him. Ronan, the fierce soul whose emotions range from anger to despair. And Noah, the tacky turn watcher who notices many things but says very little. For as long as she can remember, Blue has been warned that she will cause her true love to die. She doesn't believe in true love and never thought this would be a problem. But as her life becomes caught up in the strange and sinister world of the Raven Boys, she's not so sure anymore. When I read the synopsis of this book, I am so very excited to find out what this is about and it sounds so mysterious. But from reading some reviews on Goodreads, a lot of people were like, the plot is so confusing. Confusing. And I don't like <laughs> confusing plots, so I'm scared for that. And like I said again, the magical realism, is it gonna be my thing? And I thought that I found one review on Goodreads and it said, quirky loner girl meets privileged rich boys and... <laughs> That sounds funny to me. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna be for me, but I do hope so because then I can like rave about the series with Olivia, which would be the absolute best and also super cool thing. I have an arc of the Dream Thieves, which is the second book in the series. Because when I was younger, I always just wanted to buy and buy and buy books. And I still do that, but I'm trying to limit myself. But then I also ordered a secondhand copy of the hardcover of the Dream Thieves and then this showed up on my doorstep. So I have an uncorrected proof of a 2013 Dream Thieves release, which is really cool. <laughs> okay, I was gonna show you the next one star prediction and the covers of this one with the Raven Boys. It's eerily similar. It's basically just a mirror image. So <laughs> this is the Sacrifice Box by Martin Stewart. And I believe this came out in like 2018. And it reminded me a lot of Stranger Tink Tinks. It reminded me a lot of Stranger Things. And I love that show. It's one of my favorites. I cannot wait for season four. 
When is it coming? We don't know. Sep, Arkel, Mac, Lamb, and Headley. Five friends thrown together one summer. When they discover an ancient stone box in the forest, they each make a sacrifice. Something special committed to the box forever. And they make a pact. Four years later, a series of strange and terrifying events take place. Someone broke the rules and now everyone has to pay. How much are they willing to sacrifice? And maybe you don't get Stranger Things vibes from that like synopsis but it takes place in the 80s and I mean like friendship groups in the 80s they just make me think of Stranger Things and it sounded like a super sinister read but I have since looked on Goodreads and the reviews aren't that great. Apparently there's not really an understandable plot and you switch a lot between these five characters and they are supposed to be really good friends but some people said in the Goodreads review that you cannot really see that back in the story. Also, the characters are apparently a little bit underdeveloped and there seem to be no emotional connections between them. And I do love myself some well worked out characters. So I'm having a feeling that that's gonna be a problem for me with this story. And also the confusing plot thing, not so great. Although this sounds very cool and like a perfect story to me, the execution might not be that. And then I have two more books to talk about. The first one is Stunning. This is one of the most beautiful books that I own and that is The Surface Breaks by Louise O'Neill, a reimagination of The Little Mermaid. Deep beneath the cold stormy sea, Gaia is a mermaid who dreams of freedom from her controlling father. On the first swim to the surface, she is drawn towards a human boy. Gaia longs to join his carefree world, but how much will she have to sacrifice? What will it take from The Little Mermaid to find her voice? Hans Christian Andersen's world-famous fairy tale is reimagined through a searing feminist lens by one of our most talented writers. This is a book with the darkest of undercurrents full of rage and rallying cries, storytelling at its most spell binding. The cover is just so pretty. It looks just beautiful, but I have heard mixed opinions about the like feminist lens. For some people it felt a bit forced, like it didn't like naturally flow throughout the story. Also some people say that the characters are rather annoying and that the plot and the characters lack depth. So it's sad to see that some people think that way about this book, but still I'm definitely gonna pick it up at one point in my life. I don't know whether it will be soon though because I've had this book for like maybe three years on my shelves already. I can't stop saying that it looks so pretty but I'm unsure of whether the insides of this book are also just as pretty. And then the last book that I wanted to talk about is super popular. I am very excited to watch the show at one point though because I've heard amazing things about that but I have heard mixed opinions about Normal People by Sally Rooney and then specifically the book. Connell and Marianne grow up in the same small town in the west of Ireland but the similarities end there. In school Connell is popular and well liked while Marianne is a loner. <laughs> Okay, Marianne. <laughs> but when the two strike up a conversation, awkward but electrifying, something life-changing begins. Normal People is a story of mutual fascination, friendship, and love. It takes us from that first conversation to the years beyond in the company of two people who try to stay apart but find they can't. So on the one hand, I think it's gonna be a beautiful book about like exploring relationships between people and how they can change over the years, but because apparently they like keep on meeting meeting each other and kind of like breaking up, meeting again, breaking up and it like goes on and on and on is what I got from the synopsis and from what my friends have been telling me. I have a feeling I might get really frustrated with the characters and their dynamics. <laughs> it seems to be kind of like a theme with this video that either the plot is lacking or it is very confusing and the same is happening with normal people because people said that there is basically no plot so if we have frustrating like character relationships and no plot, I don't know what is getting me through this story. So those were the six books that I am predicting I will not like. <laughs> but let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of the books that I mentioned today and what were your thoughts. If you kind of like are familiar with my reading taste, do you think that they will be something for me? And maybe I should also make a dedicated reading vlog to reading some of my one star predictions and then let me know which ones you want to see me read the most. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one.
Bye.